diverse cultures developed similar ideas about mental illness and treatments. Modern psychiatry reflects some, but not all, of the values and concepts held by early civilizations. Ancient Greek, Indian, Chinese, Egyptian, Hebrew, European, Arabic, and other cultures explored dimensions of mental and physical health and disease. In this video, we explore how behavioral abnormalities were interpreted from the post-Stone Age cultures through the Middle Ages. Although we know little about prehistoric people's understanding of physical and mental health, archaeological records show that 77,000 years ago, humans cared for mentally impaired children. As these skeletal remains of children with marked skull diseases and traumas indicate, healers increased their life expectancy. 12,000-year-old artifacts in Israel reveal that healers or shamans were given special status as evidenced by their unique burials. Early civilizations dealt with illness through interactions with shamans, medicine men, sorcerers, magicians, mystics, priests, and other approved healers. People believed that through rituals, incantations, and offerings, sickness could be prevented or healed. Archaeological findings date surgical procedures to 6500 BCE in France and 5000 BCE in China. In 2667 BCE in Egypt, the first known medical texts were written, describing diagnoses and treatments. During the past several hundred years, anthropologists and archaeologists have studied contemporary tribal cultures to understand their ancient origins. Researchers from the 1500s wrote about healers in primitive Siberian tribes. Siberian shamans were more than the usual magicians and medicine men. They had abilities to cure illnesses in unique ways. People believed that by losing their souls, diseases occurred. Shamans entered into trances or altered states of consciousness enabling their souls to journey into spirit worlds, sometimes to the underworld. Their souls interacted with demons and lost souls without losing their own. During the journey, shamans connected to souls of the dead and strayed or stolen souls of the living. Through this method, they exorcised demons and brought about cures. Tribal peoples made few distinctions among various sicknesses, yet through rituals, incantations, and offerings, they believed sickness could be prevented or healed. The shaman acted as both priest and healer. Shamanism appeared in Turkish and Mongolian empires and later through Asia, Pacific Island cultures, and the Americas. Shamanism and totemism, as well as magic and mysticism, existed among cultures that were geographically isolated such as Aboriginal Australians. In North America, indigenous healers used herbs, sometimes hallucinogens, to enable them to contact spirit worlds. Using their supernatural contacts, they performed rituals and ceremonies to cure insanity brought about by enemies' evil charms and potions. Indigenous American tribes had names for behavioral abnormalities. Navajos used the term moth madness for epilepsy, believing that the afflicted had been seduced by frenzy witchcraft. Navajos described symptoms of grief as ghost sickness, believing that deceased persons' spirits exited their bodies and moved to the sky. Left behind were evil forms that wandered the earth, causing illnesses and deaths and pulling people back with them. Inuits of Greenland described Arctic hysteria, a condition researchers now think may be related to excessive vitamin A. The condition was misconstrued by European explorers to include states such as feigned illnesses, anxiety, and resistance to the sexual coercion by European invaders. 
Algonquins used the term Windigo for people who became demonic flesh eaters. Once thought to be a psychotic condition, research showed Windigo to be 70 iterations of folklore with only one documented case, which was caused by starvation that led to murder cannibalism. The ideas of ancient tribes contain modern values. New Zealand Maori healers believed they should be concerned not only with patients, but with patients' families, communities, environments, and spirituality. They believed cures came from living balanced lives. Similarly, many indigenous North Americans valued medicine wheels that symbolized balanced lives. From around 2000 BCE to the 5th century BCE, Greeks believed in the spirit and supernatural world. Some of their beliefs were based on Egyptian ideas. Greeks believed in numerous gods headed by Zeus. The gods behaved much like people and also had vices. Behaviors of gods explained day and night, changes in seasons, births and deaths, and rich harvests and famines. Greeks also believed that supernatural elements determined health and illness. Proper conduct was rewarded with divine protection, whereas improper or neglectful human behaviors were punished with illness. Insanity was the gods' punishment. Every spring, tragic dramas were performed for three days to portray the relationships between gods and humans. Sophocles wrote in his tragedy Antigone, in 441 BCE. Whom the gods would destroy, they first make mad. Gods could even be physicians. In Greek mythology, the Asclepians were priest physicians who followed the god of medicine Asclepius. The centaur Chiron taught Asclepius to heal. Asclepius could reanimate the dead. Afraid that the healer would render humans mortal, Zeus killed him with a thunderbolt. The Greeks believed that Asclepius cured sickness through dreams. People needing cures slept in Asclepian temples. Pharmaceuticals aided temple sleep. The cure occurred during sleep when Asclepius might appear in a dream and offer a prescription. Later, Asclepian priests interpreted temple visitors' dreams. The Asclepian temples at Kos and Epidaurus displayed plaques given by grateful patients. What may be best known about Asclepian medicine today is the symbol of medical knowledge it employed. The caduceus, carried by Hermes, is a serpent wrapped around a rod, referencing that snakes were used for healing rituals in the temples and houses of the sick. In the 5th century BCE, the age of classical Greece, philosophers taught about naturalism, the belief that laws of nature shape our world rather than gods and demons determining human fates. But some leaders continued to promote mystical, spiritual, and mythological thought while others promoted scientific ideas. Thales did not believe that psychic disorders resulted from mystic influences but instead resulted from natural events. Accordingly, they could be studied scientifically. Thales encouraged scientific thinkers to search for pathology within afflicted persons. Alcmeon did not believe that the heart was the organ of thought, rather it was the brain. He tracked the ascending sensory nerves from the body to the brain. Alcmeon believed that all mental activity originated in the central nervous system. Thus, the cause of mental illness resided within the brain. Alcmeon applied his understanding of the brain to classify mental diseases and treatments. Hippocrates, the ancestor of clinical medicine, was the son of an Asclepian priest. He developed the theory of chemical imbalance based on four humors, black bile, yellow bile, phlegm, and blood. 
Disease resulted from disproportions among the humors. Hippocrates' thinking influenced the practice of medicine for 2,000 years. Through his writings emerged the practices of purging and bloodletting, which continued into the 19th century. One hundred years after Hippocrates, his followers developed an ethical code of medical conduct, the Hippocratic Oath. Whatever in the course of my practice I may see or hear, even when not invited, whatever I may happen to obtain knowledge of, if it be not proper to repeat it, I will keep sacred and secret within my own breast. And men ought to know that from nothing else but thence, from the brain, come joys, delights, laughter and sports, and sorrows, griefs, despondency and lamentations, and by the same organ we become mad and delirious, and fears and terrors assail us. Greek physicians also contributed to the humane treatment approach, prescribing diet, massage, bathing, exercise, light, and sunlit rooms. Physicians recognized the relationship between mania and melancholia and described the symptoms of hysteria. Other physicians encouraged well-lighted rooms, regulated temperature, and sanitary conditions. No strangers were allowed to see the patient and no restraints were used. Despite these humane approaches, chains, flogging, semi-starvation, terror, and torture continued. Polytheistic Greek and Indian cultures developed in parallel and likely influenced one another. Ancient Indian scriptures also influenced Greek philosophers such as Plato, as one can see in his masterly work, The Republic. In the expositions of the oral traditions of the Vedas and Buddhism of ancient India, the mind was described as consisting of five aggregates. Yoga Sutra, the first textbook of yoga, describes mental states and personality dimensions. Texts also describe that Buddha himself made psychotherapeutic use of these practices. Ayurveda is a system of medicine developed from yoga that was originally proposed as a profound psychosomatic theory. In ancient India, mental illnesses and healing were based on spiritual and moral considerations. These original ideas based on oral traditions, became distorted and misinterpreted due to nuances of language and culture. For example, in later centuries, the external causes of mental illness were attributed to patients' sins, whether committed in current or previous lives. These sins included such behaviors as disregard for important or revered persons, deceased persons, superhuman agents, ghosts, deities, and celestial beings. Symptoms varied depending upon which spirits were offended. An ancient Indian scripture attributes mental illness to divine curses. There are descriptions of mental illnesses similar to bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. Epic poems such as Ramayana describe states of mind comparable to modern descriptions of mental disorders such as depression, impotence, alcoholism, and epilepsy. Ramayana contains detailed descriptions of depression and melancholia. In this passage, Lord Rama suffers a depressive episode. His once radiant body became all at once emaciated, like the river floods subsiding in the summer. His red face became wan. He became despondent, absorbed in pensive thought, and forgot to perform his daily allotted duties of life. The great delusion that has arisen in him is unlike any that springs from disappointment of any desired object or from a great accident. The Gupta Age is regarded as the golden age of Indian medicine. During this period, physicians created medical and surgical manuscripts based on 500-year-old scriptures. The Golden Age compilations included the Bauer Manuscript, written on 51 pages of birch bark. 
the Chiraka Samhita by the physician Chiraka, and the Sushruta Samhita by the surgeon Sushruta. These and other texts laid the foundation for India's formal system of medicine, Ayurveda, the science of life. The Chiraka Samhita detailed a magical view of insanity. Rather than emphasizing curses of gods, it stressed possession states. The text was founded firmly in the context of karma, dharma, or moral spiritual concepts. Treatment and rehabilitation mostly relied on family members, supportive caste members, and villages. Five mental illnesses were described. One confused restlessness and wandering of the mind. 2. Difficulty speaking articulately. 3. A sense of emptiness of the chest. 4. Clouded awareness and understanding. 5. Indifference with feeling neither happiness nor misery. Some mental disorders were thought to be caused by seven strong emotions. Anxiety, grief, frustrated love, anger, greed, envy, and excitement. Other mental disorders were thought to be due to bad humors or lunar cycles. Several mental disorders are described in Ayurveda, including humoral imbalance, associations with specific demons and deities, and distinct character changes and symptom patterns. As Ayurvedic medicine developed, Indian medicine adopted a Hippocratic type of humoral theory with three doshas. The humors in the body of the weak-minded, getting morbid by the above factors, and, in their turn, vitiating the brain. The seed of intelligence become more localized in the channels of the nervous system and derange the function of the mind. In addition to body humors, Ayurvedic systems also included achieving a balance of dietary factors, constitutional factors, and personality types. Therapies included medications, talking treatments, and physical therapies. A mentally healthy person attends to one's legitimate duties in personal, family, social, and occupational areas, fulfilling spiritual, affectional, material needs of self and family in harmony among one's role functions, one's abilities and limitations, prevailing circumstances and righteous means with sincerity and honesty, hope and confidence and contentment. By the 4th century BCE, Indian physicians were required to inform authorities if they suspected patients were hiding from the law. Many classes of patients expected free care, and physicians and students avoided patients of ill repute or who were deemed incurable. At the same time that Greek, Indian, Arabic, Hebrew, Roman, and European medical systems developed, different parallel systems developed in China. 3,000-year-old Chinese texts mention mental illness. For example, Descriptions of mania and psychosis without excitation, or epilepsy, representing alterations in function. Imbalance was the mechanism of psychosis. Other conditions described include confusion, visual illusions, intoxication, stress, psychosis, and even malingering. In his 1981 journal article, Psychiatry in Traditional Chinese Medicine, Lu related this story. There was an interesting case described in a history book. A king of Qi in the 3rd century BCE fell ill and could not be cured by drugs. A famous doctor, Wen Zhi, visited him and made him angry deliberately. To everyone's surprise, the king promptly recovered from his illness. This may be the earliest case in history treated with special psychotherapy. Classifications of mental illness in China changed over the centuries, but retained an interplay between opposing forces. By the beginning of the 17th century, 
classification expanded to include forms of restlessness, delirium, confusion, emotional turmoil, anxiety, and insomnia. Traditional Chinese medicine identifies symptom complexes, investigated by four methods, observing, hearing, inquiring, and feeling the pulse. Forms of psychotherapy, along with the use of herbal medications, were staples of traditional Chinese psychiatry. Psychological theories can be traced to the time of Confucius, about 2,500 years ago. His theory was based on an understanding of the stages of human development. Looking back on his life, Confucius said, At 15, I set my mind on learning. At 30, I became firm in my purpose. At 40, I was free from doubts. At 50, I came to know fate. At 60, I could tell truth from falsehood by listening to other people. At 70, I followed my heart's desire without trespassing the norm of conduct. Psychological testing existed in pre-Confucian China. The purpose of the testing was to assess potential officers of the emperor. Later, various forms of intelligence and aptitude testing aided civil service assignments. Testing children was also a popular folk custom in ancient China that persisted into the 20th century. The so-called testing the child at one year of age was a popular custom in southern China. On a child's first birthday, the baby would be placed on a large table full of food, clothing, paper, pens, jewelry, toys, books, with an arrow and sword for the boys and needle and thread for the girls. The baby was encouraged to crawl freely and pick up the item he or she liked best. By observing what the baby grasped first, the proud parents projected the baby's intelligence, personality characteristics, and aptitude by the things taken from the table. In ancient Egypt, priests, the primary caregivers, used incantations to remove demons. Flow out, poison. Come forth upon the ground. Horus conjures you. He cuts you off. He spits you out, and you rise not up, but fall down. You are weak and not strong, a coward who does not fight. You are blind and cannot see. You lift not your face. You are turned back and find not your way. You mourn and do not rejoice. Turn back, snake. Conjured is your poison, which was in any limb of Achem, the son of Jahi. Behold, the magic of Horus is powerful against you. Flow out, poison. Come forth upon the ground. Healing shrines existed among ancient Greeks and Egyptians. An ancient Egyptian deity, Hathor, with a cult city in Dendra, was particularly concerned with women, their health, and affairs. Hathor was believed to be able to impart fertility. To this day, temple visitations are made by women pursuing rejuvenated fertility. In the Old Testament, the role of intoxication in mental disorders is noted in the description of Noah. And Noah planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without, and Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Noah became intoxicated on his own wine and was found exposed in his tent. A great shame. In the Old Testament, we find an early reference to a depressive episode attributed to a failed interaction between King Saul and the God of the ancient Jews. 
But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And the servants of Saul said to him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubles you. Let our Lord give orders, and your servants who are before you will seek out a man skillful in playing on the harp, that when the evil spirit from the Lord is upon you, he may play with his hand, and you may bear it more easily. As Christianity spread throughout the Roman Empire, ideas about sin dominated, and therapy was removed from physicians and became the domain of priests. Ideas about demons, seen in the Old Testament, continued into the writings of the New Testament. Jesus was seen as having a special ability to repel demons. When he arrived at the other side in the region of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God, they shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Some distance from them, a large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. He said to them, Go. So the demons came out and went into the pigs, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and died in the water. Between the fall of Rome in the 5th century and the Age of Enlightenment in the 17th century, the Dark Ages descended on Europe. Leaders returned to promoting mystical concepts, and accordingly, insanity was a form of possession. Citizens with mental illness began to flock to shrines instead of physicians. The most famous was the Shrine to St. Dymphna at Giel, Belgium. St. Dymphna is the patron saint of sleepwalking, mental health, epilepsy, possession, princesses, and family happiness and Giel remains a site for community care of the mentally ill. The Middle Age world was filled with witches in league with the devil. To protect society from evil and illness, witches had to be found and eliminated. Two German monks, inquisitors for the Catholic Church, Heinrich Kramer and Jakob Sprenger, identified the criteria for being a witch in their 1486 book, The Malaeus Maleficarum, or the Hammer of Witches. The book became the primary source for witch hunters through the Middle Ages. Witches were women doing the work of Satan. Citizens and authorities of this era blamed witchcraft on human sexuality. Since women were believed to be more sexually loose, they risked yielding to their passions and sleeping with the devil, the sure path to becoming a witch. All witchcraft comes from carnal lust, which is in women insatiable. Previously, witches had been thought of as working magical powers to obtain what they wanted, but Christian thinkers regarded witches as using powers to obtain what the devil wanted. By charging people as devil-worshipping witches, larger numbers of people were more easily implicated. Martin Luther who launched the Protestant Reformation, reflected contemporary views of witchcraft, citing the Bible. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. In his small catechism, he taught that witchcraft was a sin that violated the Second Commandment's prohibition of idols and prescribed the biblical penalty for it. Luther said, The law that sorceresses should be killed is most just since they do many cursed things while they remain undiscovered, for they can steal milk, butter, and all things from the house. Thinking about some cow, they can say one good word or another and get milk from a towel, a table, or a handle. They can enchant a child to cry continually. If you see such women, look away, for they have diabolical faces. Therefore, let them be killed. Preoccupation with witches raged through the 17th century. Tens of thousands of suspected witches, mostly women, 
were caught and killed. Robert Burton noted in The Anatomy of Melancholy in 1621 that witches can cause or cure melancholy. Those accused of being witches included individuals who exhibited aberrant behaviors which today would be considered examples of mental illness. There is also evidence that jealousy and prejudice led to people, often women, being labeled as witches who demonstrated no such tendency. Throughout the Middle Ages, there were examples of tolerance and sympathy for the insane. Physicians advocating better treatment in the 1500s came from Switzerland and the Netherlands. Despite their humane values, the outcry against witchcraft and inhumane treatment did not succeed until the 18th century. In the European Middle Ages, Christian physicians embraced many of the old beliefs of the Greeks and Romans. People became swept up in superstition and surrendered the care of the insane to Christian priests. Madness, a moral issue, could be either a punishment for sin or a test of faith and character. Christian theology endorsed various therapies, including fasting and prayer for those estranged from God, and exorcism of those possessed by the devil. The natural therapy of the Greeks was lost as treatment turned to astrology, alchemy, theology, magical rites, and exorcism. Demonic possession remained a basic assumption. Life in the 14th century was crude and harsh, especially in cities. The Black Death consumed Europe. Life for the mentally ill was no less ugly and, in many places, unbearable. London's Bethlehem Hospital, founded in 1377, began to accept patients with insanity in 1403. Lunatics were treated with such cruelty that it became famous for its mistreatment. Indeed, curiosity seekers paid to view the patients. The state of confusion among the inmates is captured in its corrupted name, Bedlam. As the Dark Ages, the period from 500 to 1700 Common Era engulfed Europe, Middle Eastern physicians built upon the foundations laid by Greek physicians, adding to knowledge about mental illnesses. The Islamic Golden Age flourished from the 8th to the 13th centuries. Islamic physicians developed sophisticated classifications of mental disorders. The book, On the Cause of Dreams, described the nature and causes of dreams and their interpretation. A 9th century Persian physician classified mental illnesses into nine major categories with many subtypes. These included categories similar to today's diagnoses of melancholia, mania, febrile delirium, persecutory psychosis, love sickness, antisocial personality disorder, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Well known Persian physician Avicenna authored The Canon of Medicine, an encyclopedia summarizing Greek, Roman, and Persian medical knowledge, including mental illnesses. Similar to Plato, he rejected that mental illnesses resulted from evil spirits. Like Hippocrates, he believed mental illnesses resulted from imbalances of bodily humors. Avicenna described many psychiatric disorders, including melancholia, mania, nightmares, epilepsy, memory problems, and lovesickness. Arab cultures built wards for the mentally ill, followed by asylums in Baghdad in 705 and Cairo in 800. Therapies included medications, benevolent treatment, psychotherapy, occupational therapy, and music therapy. Moses Maimonides, a Spanish rabbi and physician, studied and practiced at the royal court in Cairo. His 14-volume codification of Talmudic law is an authority of Jewish scholarship. Maimonides understood that emotional stressors harmed physical health, and he developed psychosomatic theories. He also predated cognitive behavioral therapy in his treatment for grief and to medical codes of ethics that still inform medical practice.
Often overlooked in medieval history, some Europeans applied humane and scientific approaches to illness. In a 13th century encyclopedia, a Franciscan monk suggested that music would be helpful in the treatment of depression. In 14th century England, mental status examinations, called inquisitions, were used to determine mental illness. The examinations were performed before a county jury who considered three questions. Was the individual mentally disabled? How long and in what form was the disability? And did the individual have intervals of lucidity? In the 17th century, the meaning of natural fool or idiot was defined as Idiot is he that is a fool natural from his birth and knows not how to account or number twenty pence, nor cannot name his father or mother, nor of what age himself is. Fourteenth century hospital records document how a mental status examination was conducted of a Cambridgeshire woman. The said Emma, being caused to appear before them, was asked whence she came and said that she did not know. Being asked in what town she was, she said that she was at Ely. Being asked how many days there were in the week, she said seven but could not name them. They examined her in all other ways which they thought best and found that she was not of sound mind, having neither sense nor memory nor sufficient intelligence to manage herself, her lands or her goods. There was an interplay between supernatural and natural thinking across world cultures. Medical practices dealing with mental health continued to evolve and regress throughout the centuries. These practices included the idea of dedicated institutions for the care of the mentally ill. Tensions among culture, religion, and science will continue to shape concepts about the treatment of individuals with mental illnesses. <laughs>